So suppose that we have a continuous function and we're interested in finding the area under that curve from some x value a to some x value b. Well, we know how to find areas of things, but the things that we're good at finding areas of are things like rectangles, triangles, and circles. This curve really is none of those shapes. So let's try to estimate the area by building some rectangles. Let's divide this segment from A to B up into a number of pieces. Here we've divided it up into four pieces and build some rectangles here. The rectangle will have the width of the piece and the height associated with something to do with the function. Okay, in this case, I'm always taking the left-hand side of the segment and finding out how high the function is at that particular point. Then notice that the if I found the area of these four rectangles and added them up, that would be an estimate for the for the area under the curve. I'm making some mistakes here. This area is too much. In this part, my estimate, this area is is missing. So so this rectangle is too small. In this case, this rectangle is missing this piece right here, and this rectangle is missing some and adding some. We can improve our estimate by making more subdivisions here. Instead of, of four segments, let's divide it into eight segments. So where we had this error in this first rectangle by making these two rectangles now I only have this much air and this much air so I've made an improvement in this case the same sort of thing is happening I was previously missing all of that area but now I'm only missing this area and that area so I'm improving my estimate Again, in this case, we're improving the estimate. We're improving it by adding this much more. In this case, you can see some improvement each time as we can. That's a lot of what chapter three is about, is in looking at a limit process that helps us actually uh, calculate the exact area under the curve. Okay, good luck in chapter three.